Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna make a grandma sheet tray pizza. It's the perfect intro to all of you that have never made pizza at home. It's crispy on the bottom, it's moist in the middle, and it's easy to make. Let's do it. Today we're gonna make a grandma sheet tray pizza. So this is like a square pizza that in New York would be called a Sicilian slice. It's been raining all day here in Idaho. I found a nice field and this is also 10 years since I made homemade pizza done right. Its low moisture content allows it to melt in an expansive manner. Well now I've come up with this unprecise sheet tray pizza that comes out fluffy, moist, and delicious. And I don't use a scale, I use the Italian grandma method of quanto basta, which is the right amount. The first thing that you gotta know about that's super important is you need instant yeast. It's not active dry yeast, it's not rapid rise yeast, it's not any of the other ones. It's instant yeast, and this is my favorite yeast, and they come in $2.50 packages this big, and you can put it right into a quart container. It's more finely milled than the other yeast, so you don't have to proof it. And it rises in the fridge, which is really fantastic. One half teaspoon of instant yeast. We're gonna let this rise for two days or 48 hours. We don't need very much yeast at all. Okay, salt. This is one of the most important things here. So I've got a Morton salt here. I'm putting one tablespoon of Morton kosher salt. If you're using diamond crystal, I would do a tablespoon and a half uh, because that's the least salty of all salts. And if, if you've got table salt, which is super condensed, I would start with like half a teaspoon and see where it goes from there. Just get some homogeny there. Eight cups of all-purpose flour. Now normally I weigh this stuff, but I'm, I'm not doing it because I don't need it. It's such a long rise that it doesn't really matter. So mix this around a little. That's one cup, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that's the all-purpose flour. If you wanted to mix in, you know, two cups of whole wheat, obviously remove two cups of the all-purpose. So this gets a little stir from bottom to top here just to get the yeast and salt kind of mixed throughout here. I'm gonna go with four cups of water. Four cups. All right, we'll mix this up. Now this is a no knead dough, and that's what I love about it. There's a huge margin of error, because we're able to, you know, look at it and say, oh, it's a little dry and add some water, and time sort of heals all wounds with this. All we need to do is get like some homogeny happening here. Once it's like that, this is a new thing for me, but I've been doing it. I've been adding about two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And this adds some color to the dough. It certainly retains moisture because the olive oil doesn't evaporate away in the oven. And that is pretty much it. As this rises, you know, we'll come check on it every, every six hours, every 12 hours. It doesn't really, you know, 12 hours is fine. But at that point, we'll just mix it around a little more like this. So if there's any crusty bits, you know, they can be folded back into the center. If yours does not look wet like this, add more water. And if it looks extremely wet and it isn't forming, just sift in a little more flour. We're gonna cover this with a wet rag. I'm gonna leave this out at room temperature. I'm gonna bring it inside. Actually, I'm gonna sleep with it. It's gonna be in my bedroom. Uh, and then I'll show it to you after it's risen. It's been about 12 hours and now it's time to punch the dough down and mix it around a little bit. Come here, check this out. So remember what I talked about, some of the bits that will get a little crusty? Well, now's the opportunity to just basically reincorporate it all into the middle. And we're just gonna go like this here, something like that, taking the bottom, sort of folding it on top. You can see that it's you know quite sticky and fantastic. And uh, it had risen. That's it. We're gonna cover it up and we're gonna give it another 12 hours at room temperature. After 24 hours, you're gonna put your dough in the fridge and you're gonna let it rise for another at least 12, up to two days. These recipes that say you'll have pizza dough in three hours, they're bogus because the beauty of pizza dough is mature fermentation. The next step is to cover this and wait six hours. Six hours, Frank? Oh man, that's so many hours. It's not though. I've gone over 24 hours 
it just keeps getting better and better. And every six to eight hours, the yeast, whether it's natural or added, creates a new generation of yeast. So if you can go to up to 48 hours or even a little bit longer, you're gonna have something that tastes so much better than an artificial rise that's created with active dry yeast and sugar. That's, it's all, it's literally thuff if you do it that way. So we started 24 hours out in the open. We let that thing rise and you know, room temperature environment, it rose really, really quickly, and then we slowed down the rise so it didn't turn into a, an alcoholy smelling dough. Now here we are, it's been like eh, 45 hours, call it, and it smells great. We're ready to divide this into two dough balls and let them do their final rest and rise. We put some flour on our board. Look at that, look at how sticky and strandy that is. Putting flour on top, check it out. We got a nice big piece of dough. And at this point, I'm gonna eyeball it right in half. Now what makes this dough so great is how wet it is. It's really, really wet. So don't be afraid to really throw a lot of flour on the outside right now. This is the only way you're gonna get it not to stick. So we're gonna make a little loaf here, just folding it under itself. And we'll let it do a little rise there. And the goal is for each one of these to fit perfectly on a half sheet tray, which are eh, about the size of this cutting board. So we're gonna stay in this state for about 30 minutes, up to an hour, it will rise. And then after that, we're gonna be able to knead it out and roll it out. And now we'll cover it and let that rise. So now we gotta get our mise en place. We've gotta have the cheese ready. We've gotta have the sauce ready. We've gotta have the toppings, the olive oil, the salt. We gotta have the oven preheated to 420 degrees. Why 420? Ah, I like that number. Check it out. I'm gonna take the little guy and I'm just gonna put him right here and cover him. It's the same thing as like when it was rising. So now we'll take a little extra flour, we'll put it on top, and the first thing I'm gonna do is press into the middle. Oh, and I can feel how gorgeous this is already. Oh yeah. Really good to have that bench scraper around. So at this point, I'll take it and I'll rest my two hands underneath, and I'm just letting the weight of the dough stretch this out. And now I'm just gonna kind of rotate my hands around a little bit so another spot stretches. And then I'll just go like that. If a hole forms, it's okay. What you actually wanna do is take some dough from a different spot and bring it to the hole, okay? And that way this doesn't become a super thin, thin area. This is the size I'm trying to make it. Let's start right in the middle push out and away, and then in the middle and towards me this way. So you can see how well rested this dough is, how it's just, it's not pulling back. This way and this way. Don't worry if you're rolling that crust away, it will rise again. It will rise again. We're gonna treat this a little bit like a focaccia, meaning that there's gonna be a whole bunch of olive oil is that we're trapping this delicious fruits fat underneath the pizza dough. And this makes it moist, but it also creates a crusty bottom. And I'm actually starting to like my grandma pies more than my wood-fired ones. <gasps> he didn't say that, did he? He did. So if you've ever made pizza on a paddle where you slide it in, you really have to worry about the dryness on the bottom so that it doesn't get stuck. You know, that's like the whole thing. The shake is super important. This is margarita. Here, not nearly as much of a problem. I'm just gonna go like this here. All right, here's some shredded mozzarella coming all over just a little bit. Raw onions, kind of going for a pizza supreme here. 
these uh, mushrooms are less than ideal, but uh, we gotta use them and I think this is the perfect way to use them. You put it, I like it. What'd you do? Ah, I put what I had. You know what I'm saying? Some pepperonis. It's already plural, pepperoni. Just gonna put those around. Don't forget the basil. Sweet flavors with a maze, yo. Sprinkle it on top. Sprinkle it, don't stop. It's weird. I don't know why. Every time I cook basil, it smells like pot. I mean, I'm just going bananas here. I'm not putting bananas on the pie, but you know, I'm going crazy with the toppings. We have a lot of things. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. What's wrong here? You need a piece of cheese there? Mm -hmm. Right there? Mm -hmm. Okay. 420, man. Oh, middle rack. Ah. Now, I forget the exact number because I'm not a scientist, I'm just a cook. But I think yeast dies at about 130 degrees. And this is what makes the grandma pie so awesome. It's gonna rise a little bit slower. That internal temperature is gonna come up slow. So we're gonna have an airier dough. And then finally the inside will hit 130. And that's when the yeast dies. And then wherever we are at that point, boom, stuck in time. And then it all starts solidifying. This one's about ready. It's been about 22 minutes. A lot of steam's gonna come out, be careful. Nice. So here's things I'm noticing. The cheese has taken, you know, it can take a little bit more, not much, but the crust. I'm at 6,000 feet, so all kinds of things are happening weird with doughs, but what I realized is for the next pizza, I have to paint the crusts with oil. There we go, see how I painted the crust with oil? Oh, can you see that? Oh yeah. I went from like pain to pleasure so quickly. Agony to ecstasy. All right, so check out this. Look at this guy, look at this underneath. I mean, that's gorgeous. And you can see how it's pliable and yet crispy. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Pliable yet crispy at the same time. Can you hear it? Look, oh, yes. And then, this is gorgeous. A great option for the kids is just cheese. Look at this, I got my Betty Crocker gloves on. Look at that. It's hot, I'm moving it. Ah. Okay. Nice, pliable. Okay. Let's see. Gorgeous. Really nice. All right. Nice. Look at how thin. Beautiful. And look at the crumb here. Look at how soft that is. Do you see that? Look at that. Crusty on the outside, soft on the inside. Look at that. You see that? That's gorgeous. So you got the crisp on the outside, the soft in the middle. Look at one of these pieces here. Really pretty. Gorgeous bottom. Holding the texture nicely. The air pockets from that long rise. Oh. All that oil on the bottom, it's like I could make like a vegan puff pastry with olive oil instead of butter. That's what the dough tastes like. It tastes like vegan puff pastry. No, it tastes like focaccia bread with olive oil. The Florentines know what's up. This is delicious. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you make the recipe. Please subscribe to the channel. And if you're looking for more pizza stuff, check out Homemade Pizza Done Right. It was very ahead of its time. See you next time.